All right, water before filming video two tonight. Which I realize will mean nothing to you because of when these are coming out. Hi everyone, my name is Maddie and welcome back to my channel. Today is my second Canada Reads video. So today we are going to be talking about the second Canada Reads book that I read. And honestly, these are just in the order of the books that I read. There's nothing like crazy special about the order that I'm putting them in. So the second book that I read is The Midnight Bargain by C.L. Polk, and it is going to be defended by Rosie Adia, who is a Olympian and broadcaster. All right, premise of this novel. In the fantasy novel The Midnight Bargain, Beatrice is making her debut at bargaining season, an annual event where wealthy young men and women gather from all over the world to make advantageous marriages. But she harbors secret plans that will upend society. Rather than get married, Beatrice plans to bind a greater spirit and become a full magician. Performing the secret ritual goes against the rules of her world, which prohibits women from practicing magic while they can still bear children. With the help of the wealthy Levan siblings, Fiery Isbeta, and her handsome brother, Ineth, Beatrice searches for a way to change old patriarchal traditions. That's the premise. So, to dive into the plot. <laughs> So yes, this book takes place while Beatrice is at her bargaining season and then through a fluke she's trying to find these gr grimoires that have been written and kind of like a code by female magicians to help them learn and practice magic. She meets Yves Speta and Ineth. She falls in love with Ineth at first sight and her and Yves Speta becomes friends as they're trying to figure out how to get their freedom. Note, I looked up how to say is beta and I couldn't find anything, so I really hope I'm pronouncing that right. Maybe next week on Canada Reads I'll find out I'm saying it completely wrong. Who knows? That's just a theme of this channel now, is that I don't know how to say character names. And then from there it kind of devolves as the rest of bargaining season goes on. Things about the plot that I really liked about this book, things about the plot I didn't like. <laughs> So one of the things about the plot that's really interesting is the system of magic that they have and the way that that kind of drives the story forward. One of the issues that I had with the plot is that it very much presents itself at the beginning as this like fantasy narrative where there's some sort of marriage system and then all of a sudden she's like I'm very against marriage until I meet the one TM who is Ineth and I find those narratives really frustrating because it's very exhausting to me that like the whole thing is supposed to be like maybe you don't have to have a romantic partner in your life in order to you know feel like happy and fulfilled and then it just ends up almost like affirming what it seeks to challenge however I do have to say the plot of this book gets better as it goes on and I was really happy with the way that it all came together in the end if you couldn't tell by my clothing changing I failed to film all those videos so I'm just gonna dive right in and keep going from here. So characters in The Midnight Bargain. I think Ineth is one of my favorite characters in the book just because of how well written he is. He does a really good job of like being the perfect ally in the sense that like he doesn't always get everything right and he doesn't have all the answers but he's really willing to listen to Beatrice and his sister and learn what they need in their lives in order to recognize that what he thinks might be helping them isn't actually helpful and be willing to risk and lose privileges and things of his own in order to be able to make change and I feel like a lot of times male characters in these types of stories are really easily written off as being terrible people because of the system that they're in and I think it's really important to recognize that now while Ines does have the privilege of education it is possible within these systems of power to do your own research and to work to change that narrative. Beatrice herself could frustrate me sometimes but I think that was just like her general love sickness that I didn't really understand at certain points but I did appreciate kind of this push and pull of her trying to decide what was the right place for her. I think I really like Yisbeta how fiery she is although she could be really impulsive sometimes and that really frustrated me. The other character that I really loved is Nadia who is the minor spirit that Beatrice ends up making bargains with throughout the beginning of the book and she is just like really fiery doesn't put up with anyone's bullshit 
and very much like knows what she wants and gets it she often gets Beatrice into like weird situations because like the spirit will just kind of take control and like chug down a glass of wine and I think that's one of the things that I really appreciate about the spirits is that they just love and appreciate the little things about life which I think is such a good and interesting message to have inside the novel. So what I liked about the book, what I didn't like, anything I haven't covered. Um, things that I liked about the book that I haven't covered. I think I had just have to say this book really got me in the end. Like I finished the book and I was like damn that really turned it around for me because I didn't think that I was going to like it and I really appreciate the way that it recognized um, different paths for women throughout the end of the book without, I don't want to say forcing compromise because like sometimes in life you do need to compromise but I think it makes this really interesting message about f like learning to fight and to push for the things you want and finding systems that work. Obviously Beatrice is really lucky with the privilege that she has and the friendships that she makes in order to be able to afford some of those changes a little bit more than other women might be able to and I kind of appreciate the way that the book recognizes action. In some other ways though, I don't know if I like the way that the book feels about quiet rebellions, because obviously I think these big bold rebellions that make lasting changes for everyone in systems of power are really important, but I also think it's important to recognize that whether through their situation or their uh, I guess lack of privilege like in a certain scenario some people don't always have the resources to speak up if they want to continue to live so I think it's really important to not belittle those characters that are making those silent rebellions and I think that's something that unfortunately the book does sometimes. I also appreciate that the book doesn't try to redeem every single character. I find that kind of frustrating sometimes because I think it's really important to recognize that even if people learn to become better people and to recognize rights and things like that, it's totally comfortable for the people who were put through that pain and discriminated by them to hold some of that inside of them and I appreciate the way that the book doesn't like magically just make their families better people and it really navigates that relationship well. Things that I didn't like, I think I already kind of covered the biggest thing, which was that kind of like stereotypical, oh, I just have to meet the right guy, but then the book does a really good job of kind of pushing that narrative a little bit. In some ways, almost trying to play with this idea of whether or not Beatrice has to choose between magic or being with Ineth, which is really interesting. One of the other things I struggled in the book with a little bit is the reasons that are given for why women have to wear the collars, because the way that it was explained at the birth at the beginning almost made it seem, I don't want to say justifiable, but like understandable in some ways that it was a form of protection. Now obviously like that shouldn't be your first thing to do, they should be looking for solutions, but it wavered on that line a little bit and I just wish she had made it a little bit more clear cut than some of that blurring because I got concerned about some of the readings that people might pull from it where they might end up trying to justify the uses of the colors which is a little bit frustrating for me but I think with everything else in the narrative it ends up correcting that and explaining why that's not the right option and that that's the option that people jumped to. I don't know if there's anything else major about the book that I found frustrating. I think sometimes I did wish Isbeta was the heroine just because she was the more fascinating character to me, but I do understand why they placed Beatrice as that central character throughout the novel. I just, for me, like that lovesick behavior wasn't really a thing that I enjoyed reading about, but like I said, it all it all washed out in the end, so that's what's that's what matters. In terms of writing in the book, they do a really good job with world building because they lay that foundation really well and then they build it up from there. I think that's really important in systems of magic to be able to understand how magic functions because if you spend the whole book being really confused about what is going on and who is in charge, like that's not going to help anyone enjoy reading the book. I did find it wasn't like my favorite writing in the world like there wasn't really like quotes or things that I was writing down but it did it was an easy read and it pulled me through really well so I'll say I'll say that about the writing and yes the good job world building uh how well it transports us again because of that world building aspect I think it does a really good job of like 
pulling us out and I think it also does this really good job of like playing the line between reality and fantasy really well because even though it is this fantasy world it is dealing with very real problems so being able to understand and address those problems in a fantasy environment does a really good job of transporting the reader but also giving them an opportunity to learn about issues within current society. So yeah, that's everything that I have to say about The Midnight Bargain. I will see you all tomorrow for our next book where I will be discussing Hench. Thanks for watching the series. If you like it, please leave a comment down below and of course my Goodreads and Instagram is always linked. Make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you get notifications when the next video comes out.